Welcome back to the Mirror Football YouTube channel. I'm Ned Keating and today I'm joined by the Mirror's transfer doyen himself, Ryan Taylor, as we run the rule over the latest from the transfer window. And Ryan, we're into August now. We're into the final few weeks of the window. So, of course, things are starting to heat up. We're going to be talking about Chelsea. We're going to be talking about Arsenal. But first, we are going to be talking about Manchester City. But rather than a player coming in, it's going to be a player going out. Julian Alvarez, someone whose future has been talked about a lot this window already been linked with moves to rival Premier League clubs, but it looks like Atletico Madrid are joining the race for his signature uh, and looking to sign him this window as well, bringing him to, to Spain. In terms of Julian Alvarez, how have we arrived then at this situation where, you know, to be playing for this Manchester City side who, you know, constantly win trophies, of course, in his first season on the treble, didn't win as much last year, still managed to get a Premier League winner's medal nonetheless. But how have we got to this situation where he's decided that actually... I want to go out and, and I want to go and experience something else away from Manchester City. I think Erlen Haaland is obviously the biggest the biggest factor in that, really. I think Alvarez is see a different player to Haaland, but he's still a centre forward. Um, so he likes to play a little bit deeper than Haaland. He's more of a second striker. But um, when Manchester City have been operating with the, the 4-1, 4-1 system, although there's been a few variations of that, maybe a 4-3-3 as well, obviously there is only one central striking role. Um, and Alvarez has sometimes found himself shoehorned on the left side. Um, he's also played centrally as well behind Haaland. But I think having won all there is to offer, um, although I'm not sure, I, I don't believe City have won the League Cup since Alvarez has been there. But he's won, he's won the big titles. He's won the Champions League. He's won two Premier Leagues. So actually, I think he's at a, a point in his career where you can probably understand why he might want to move on to Pastures New. Um, obviously, he's Argentine, so La Liga is probably a, a league of, of great, great appeal. See, a lot of South American players, you know, tend to settle in La Liga when they come to Europe. And I think, ultimately, I don't think anyone can really blame Alvarez if he does want to depart. I think um, there was talk at the end of last season that he was set to review his options. Um, of course, he represented Argentina at the Copa America, which they won, and now he's been at the Olympics with Argentina. So from from what we read, it looks like Alvarez's agent is going to hold a meeting with City to kind of go through the options. Supposedly, Paris Saint-Germain and Atletico Madrid are the two. Atletico Madrid seem to be in the box seat at the moment, despite signing Alexander Sorloff, who was the top goal scorer. Um, I believe he pipped Dovbik on the, the final day of the season to the golden boot. Um, but it, it does seem like they want to bring two strikers in. So the Sorloff deal isn't going to impact uh, Atletico's pursuit of, of Alvarez. And I suppose as well, she said there about, you know, being an Argentine himself, Alvarez must uh, look forward or relish the prospect of working under a, a, a great in Argentinian football win, Diego Simeone as well. But in terms of Manchester City, if they were to lose Alvarez, and it probably looks more likely that they are going to lose in this window, uh, then, then keep him perhaps at this stage. What impact does that have on them? Because it's only then early in Harlan as their only senior recognised out and out Striker, does it mean perhaps then that we're going to see Manchester City go back into the window? Or is Pep Guardiola, I mean, he's the master, isn't he? He's played with false nines before. Are we going to see that perhaps instead this year? You would imagine losing a player of, of Alvarez's calibre, you do want to replace, you know, his his contribution and his numbers. Because although they were nowhere near as good as Haaland's, of course, and, and Foden's last season, you know, he's a player that has chipped in. And as you mentioned, he's a, a player that plays, you know, as a centre forward. So there's not really too many of those options within City's squad outside of Haaland, who, as we've known, can be um, subjected to to fitness problems. Um, although it wasn't so much the case in his first season, but certainly the last, uh, last season, there was a few spells where he was out of the side, he had a foot injury. Um, so I'd be interested to see what happens. I think there is a chance City might move for someone, although there's not too many concrete links at this moment of time if they're to get a big, sizable fee for Alvarez, which, as reported, seems to be potentially upwards of £60 million. That's a, a decent amount of cash to maybe look at investing into another forward. So I think City will be well-stocked for this. They were probably um, well aware that Alvarez may consider his future. Um, it does seem quite likely now that he might move on, although there's no concrete steps that have taken place. I don't even believe City have received a bid yet, but... Um, you know, given he's been at the Olympics, it's no surprise that things are now set to ramp up. 
As ever on this channel, we do love it when our fans and our viewers get involved uh, with questions as well. We've got one from James uh, around this this whole kind of situation for Alvarez. Uh, and, it, and it kind of focuses on if he were to move to Atletico Madrid, I suppose, rather than anything else. Because it asks, how would Alvarez fit into a style of play, a system under Diego Simeone? Presumably, Simeone's not going to move to Atletico, uh, away from Atletico this summer. It is going to be, what James means there is, is how is he going to fit into this Atletico side? Especially when you see, you know, as you said there, they've already brought in Alexander Solo. They've got Antoine Griezmann there already, although in terms of kind of where he might play, both in terms of the club and, and as well as his position, as well as we saw for France a little bit deeper in the Euros. But how is Alvarez going to fit into this, this setup, really, at Atletico Madrid? Well, Atletico are a team that they have a little bit of tactical flexibility because of the amount of players they have in the squad. They always have a large squad, um, but Simeone is, is frequently used the, the three at the back, which sees two strikers play an attack. So it's not really a big issue. Um, he's also used a, a 3 4 2 1, um, similarly to um, what Chelsea are probably going to do this season with the two number 10s, what Palace have done. That's probably the best example with the two number 10s behind the striker. So players like Griezmann um, can still fit into a team that has two strikers, such as Soloff and Alvarez. I think Alvarez is actually a player that's very tactically flexible. So it's not it's not really a concern from that point of view that he, he may not feature. I think if they're going to be paying a lump sum of potentially 60 million, you'd expect him to come in and be the main man. Griezmann is kind of on the way out now. Um, he wants to eventually move to the MLS. I know he's visited um, when I was over in the States uh, earlier this year uh, with the MLS. They were saying that Griezmann's been over quite a few times to sound out some of the clubs he could potentially move to. Now, I don't think he'll move this summer, but Al uh, Atletico, of course, need to build for the future. And, and Alvarez is still a good age. He's got great experience behind his, um, you know, in his armoury now, having come from South America, from, from River Plate and winning the Champions League. He's He's come on leaps and bounds under Guardiola and I do expect him to, to go to Atletico and probably be the main man. Moving on now and uh, looking at Chelsea and I suppose this one might get a little bit complicated in terms of their midfield. We're going to be talking about one outgoing and one potential incoming but the outgoing first Ryan and it's Conor Gallagher. Uh, he's on his way to Spain to kind of dot the I's and, and cross the T's as we were recording this Monday morning at least um, to, to dot the I's and cross the T's. Uh, on a move to Atletico Madrid as well. Potentially could be Julian Alvarez's uh, teammate come, come the start of the new campaign. Um, in terms of what this means, though, for Chelsea, um, I suppose it's probably... It's going to be disappointing for the fans, for sure, isn't it, to see another academy graduate go. But the direction that they're heading in under Enzo Moresco, more of a possession style of play, perhaps Conor Gallagher wasn't going to fit in to that anyway. And, and the sounds out of the club is that, you know, this new offer that they'd, they'd given to him in terms of a, a playing role as well. It wasn't quite what Gallagher wanted. So it kind of seems like that where they were heading along the same path, they've maybe gone in different directions this summer with a change of manager at Chelsea, but it's still going to have a bit of an impact on their squad, isn't it, in terms of the depth, and especially in midfield, as, as to what they've got in, uh, at, at their disposal this year. It's clear that Maresca has come in. He's trying to shake things up. Um, we saw the Keenan and Dewsbury Hall signing um, earlier in the window, which I thought was a great buy. Um, Although it is a little bit doubtful at the moment how it might work out because he was fielded as a left winger the other day um, in pre-season against Manchester City. I actually think Dewsbury Hall will be a great signing and I think he's he's far more accustomed to Maresca's system than Gallagher obviously played under Maresca last season. So that goes without saying. But the qualities he brings to the table are, are different to Gallagher. Gallagher's more of a presser. He's more of a runner. Um, whereas as Dewsbury Hall is someone that likes to drive with the ball at his feet and he can sort of uh, transform defence into attack. He can score goals. He had great numbers in the championship last season. Um, so I do feel like Gallagher is a player that will probably need replacing within the squad. Um, but at the same time, I mean, it's sad how how it's worked out because, you know, Gallagher is, he, he bleeds Chelsea blue. He's a, a player that, you know, he knows what it means to represent the club. He, he's fought his way through so many loans to to prove himself at Chelsea. And of course, the contract situation is now, you know, almost spoiled what he what he turned in last season under Pochettino when he was a mainstay. But there was still that sort of lingering doubt as to whether he was going to stay long term. And it um obviously he's now off to Atletico. But I do feel like despite the fact he was told by Chelsea that if he signed his two year deal with a one year option he'd be a squad player. 
and the club don't feel he's suited to Maresca's style, I still feel like he's a character and player that will need replacing because, as I mentioned, it's hard to replace um, players that have played for an academy and they know what it takes to, to represent the badge. Um, but Gallagher was someone that deeply cared about Chelsea and I think that's um, you know a, a quality and um, a characteristic that will maybe be difficult to replace in a time where Chelsea have lacked leaders. Yeah, we, we saw similar with Arsenal last week. And if you haven't watched it yet, there's a great Q&A that we did with uh, Football.London's Tom Canton about Arsenal and, and kind of similar to Emil Smith-Rowe as well, where he was an academy graduate. And you're kind of sad. You, you're kind of almost gutted that it never really worked out for them in the end. And, and you're kind of almost sad to see him go because those fans have that affinity with a player who kind of feels like one of their own, isn't it, as the, as the chant goes. Um, but sticking with Gallagher for a second, and we do have another listener question here. This one's from Jenny. Uh, and she's wondering, could a move to La Liga help Gallagher develop his game differently compared to if he were to stay in the Premier League? Of course, I think Tottenham have been linked with him in the past and, and briefly in this window as well. But it looks more likely that kind of Gallagher's future lies in Spain instead. Is there things that he could pick up from working under Diego Simeone that, that could add to his game? And, and hopefully if he is going to, you know, maybe he isn't going to play in the Premier League. But if he's going to become a, a midfield mainstay for England, is there is there things that he could take into that potentially? With the greatest of respect, um I feel like Gallagher is quite a technically limited footballer and I don't mean that disrespectfully, although it does sound so. But his greatest qualities are his pressing. Um, you know, he's a leader. He can get about the pitch. He's not scared to put a tackle in. Um, and we know he can score goals, but I think he is tailor-made for Diego Simeone's football. Um, and I'd imagine, I don't know this for certain, but that Gallagher would have spoken to England teammate Kieran Trippi about what it's like to to work under Simeone. And if you've hear, heard Trippier speak before on podcasts, he loves Simeone. He 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 feels that move to Atletico, although it didn't last very long, was the greatest thing he can, could have done in his career when he decided that, it, well, he was basically told by Tottenham that he'd be moving on. Um, he won La Liga out there, albeit it was in the season uh, where there wasn't fans um, in the stadiums. But um, Kieran Trippier loved his time at Atletico. And I think... It's clear that Atletico see him as a player that will probably be a starter for the club. He's um, Atletico are a team that are, are not necessarily pleasing on the eye, but no opponent will ever have an easy game against them because they work so hard. They fight for one another. Um, the fans really get behind the team. I've been to the Wanda Metropolitano a couple of seasons ago and the, the atmosphere surprised me how much the, the, the fans sort of relish every tackle. So I feel like it's a good move for, for Gallagher in the circumstances. Um, he's actually turned down a move to Villa um, earlier in the window. They agreed a club record £57 million deal with Chelsea. I think looking back, you do sort of wonder whether that might have actually been a good move for Gallagher. But at the same time, I think these these challenges where you go overseas at the time, it might not seem like a preference and uh, you know it might be a bit daunting. Hence why Gallagher's taken so long to decide and give his yes on personal terms. But I think this will be a great experience for him out there. I really do. And I'm looking forward to seeing him performing La Liga and I really want him to do well because I feel like he has been forced out of Chelsea. There's no getting away from that. And if it's going to be one midfield player out for Chelsea, then of course it kind of seems fitting that he would be one midfield player in. And someone that they've been linked with is Matt O'Reilly. Now, certain words out of Matt O'Reilly's camp, uh, the Celtic players' camp, suggest that maybe he's not overly keen on a move to Chelsea, but sometimes, you know, this happens in the window, mixed messages. Maybe it's just to get a better wage when he arrives at the new club. Who knows? But in terms of Matt O'Reilly, someone that has been linked with several clubs this transfer window, in terms of his playing style himself, what are his strengths and what would his potential role be if he were to move to Chelsea? I'm slightly sceptical about the links so far. Um... Because I feel like it would be an easy one to throw out there. There's a lot of clubs in the mix for um, for O'Reilly at the moment. Atalanta, Southampton. And as we sometimes see, names are thrown out there to sort of drive up price tags and generate interest. However, I do think he'd be a great signing for for Chelsea. I, I'm actually surprised. No, n no other sort of big top six, top seven Premier League clubs are in for him. Because if you look at his numbers last season, they're absolutely incredible. You know, SPL or not. 19 goals, 18 assists, plays all six of Celtic's Champions League matches. Um, and also, Atletico tried to sign him in January on a, a loan with a, a buy option. Um, other big clubs such as Roma have been in for him. I mean, the fact Atalanta are looking at him, you know, should probably probably be a clue for some of these, um, you know, top Premier League clubs that, that he's a top player because they're a bit like a Brighton. They've got a real eye for talent. Um 
And it would be sad for Celtic if they were to lose him because it's one of those things where, you know, Celtic do, although they're a massive club, they are kind of powerless to lose in top talents. But I think O'Reilly is a, a really great player. And I actually think he's more worthy of just being a squad player at Chelsea. I, I think he could be a starter um, somewhere in the Premier League. Like a, a, a Tottenham, I think he'd be a great signing for Spurs, Newcastle as well. Um, and I don't expect him to cost a ridiculous amount of money. I think I might be wrong here, but probably 20 to 25 million would probably get you O'Reilly. Um, so I, if Chelsea are indeed interested in him, I think that would be a, a smart move. But I think he needs to play football. He's at a great age. Um, I could not believe he missed out on Denmark's squad for the Euros earlier this summer. I thought that was a, a scandalous decision. But I think um, O'Reilly is a player that many clubs should be looking at. He's a great age as well. I think he's only 23. Um, so, yeah, I think he he's a player that, that is only going to get better. Ryan, we're going to finish up. Uh, it might be another midfielder and it feels like a midfield special this morning, but we're going to feel, finish up with Arsenal and their move for Mikel Marino and, and kind of news over the weekend appears to be that we are very close to the deal being announced for us. It looks like he's uh, uh, you know very keen on the move himself. Arsenal very keen on the player as well, submitting bids and everything else. Give us an update as to where we are. Like I, like I said earlier, we are recording this Monday morning. So, of course, very, very, for anyone who might be watching this a little bit later on in the day, in the week or whatever, it, you know, it does come with the caveat that things do move very, very quickly in transfer windows. But just give us an idea where Monday morning, where we're at with this transfer move in a minute. Last week, I reported um, that a verbal bid went in um, for Mikel Moreno, who is understood to be Mikel Arteta's top midfield target. Obviously, they got Ricardo Calafuri in. Um, tick that defensive box. Great signing. Um, Moreno is into the final year of his Real Sociedad, Sociedad contract. He's due to report back for training this morning following an extended break after winning Euro 2024 with Spain. Um, and he wants to move to Arsenal. Now, personal terms are in place. But as of this moment, Monday morning, Arsenal are still yet to submit a formal bid in writing to Real Sociedad. Um, sources close to the player disclosed that a verbal offer went in. Arsenal say they haven't, um, but I believe a verbal bid has gone in um, and it's around about close to the valuation Real Sociedad are looking for. Reported a couple of weeks ago, they're looking for about €30 million, Euros, which is about £25 million. And um, There had been interest from Barcelona and Atletico, but that's not been followed up now. And ultimately, they believe Moreno is heading to Arsenal. He's already had a year in the Premier League back in 2017-2018 with Newcastle. Um, joined on an initial loan from Borussia Dortmund, then made it permanent. Um, but then he left at the end of that season um, to return to Spain. Um, it looks like Arsenal will get this deal done. However, at, the, at this moment in time, the two clubs are yet to enter formal steps. Um, it's believed talks have been taking place regarding central payment structure, add-ons, that kind of thing. However, at this moment, there's still a little bit of work to do. Um, as I said, Arsenal are adamant they've not made a bid at this moment in time. Um, but because Moreno's back in at Real Sociedad today, I'm expecting this to to be one that moves um, probably this week because Sociedad obviously ramping up their preparations for the new La Liga season. They've just brought in Lukas Sucic from um, Red Bull Salzburg. They're also looking at Carlos Soler from Paris Saint-Germain. So the fact they're looking at midfielders probably tells you that they are you know, resigned to losing Moreno. Um, I believe Arsenal do have other midfield targets on their radar. However, Moreno is the top pick. He wants to join Arsenal and he has also spoken to Mikel Arteta about the club, about the project. Um, so it looks like this one is is going to get done barring a drastic U-turn or a big, big shock. There's a question that I wanted to ask you, but it does kind of tie in with a, a listener question that we've got here from Steve um, as well. What I wanted to ask was what role would uh, would you expect Mikel Marino to fulfil if he were to join Arsenal? And Steve wants to know, how would Marino improve Arsenal's midfield and what qualities would he bring compared to their other current options in midfield? I suppose both of those can kind of almost be merged in into one answer there, can't they? In terms of what, what skills and what assets that he does bring, it, it's going to be for a certain role that Mikel Arteta is earmarked him for. If you look at Arsenal's midfield, you've obviously got a six and then usually two eights. Martin Odegaard plays on the right. Declan Rice has been playing on the left and you've had Jorginho anchoring behind or Thomas Partey. Partey's still only got a year left on his deal. There are doubts about whether he's going to 
stay at the club beyond this season. Um, there was sort of even sort of whispers that he, he might leave this summer, but that obviously doesn't look the case at the moment. So Moreno would probably be looking in at slotting in on the left eight role. Um, he's left footed. He can. Um, he would probably see Declan Rice drop back, um, but he's he's more of a controller. He's someone that likes to sort of brush the ball through the through the lines, uh, move the ball to the forwards. If you look at the way Arsenal play, Mikel Arteta loves his fullbacks and his midfielders to play passes into the wide players. Um, they always look to receive the ball facing goal. Um, they're a very front foot team and in the way they attack. Um, and I think Moreno is someone that will just bring a lot more control and quality in possession. Um, he's not a world beater. He's not someone that's going to come in and sort of be man of the match every game in terms of, um, you know, getting goals and assists. He can chip in with goals, um, but he's not got that magic like Martin Odegaard. He's more of a steady player, uh, strong in a tackle, can can play in really tight spaces, got great feet and then moves the ball forward. Um, I mean, all Spanish players, as we saw at the Euros, are usually technically sound, but Moreno is particularly um, strong in in all those departments. He's he's got a great touch. He can pass with both feet. He's good beating the press. So I think he'd be a very smart addition. Um, obviously, slightly different to a usual um, Arsenal transfer target. They usually target sort of players under twenty five, but I think this is a chance for Arsenal. They know there's not much in it now between them and Manchester City. And this is the kind of signing that's going to help them get, um, you know, more points on the board and, and be a better outfit. So I think it'd be very smart business if, if Arsenal were to go ahead with it. Um, but there are still a little bit of work to do. There is still a little bit of work to do. Sorry. Ryan, thank you so much for joining us today. Really appreciate your time as always. Of course, you can keep up to date for all the latest from the transfer window and everything else to do with football. Of course, we have the Community Shield coming up later this week and we're less than two weeks out from the start of the new Premier League season as well. You can keep up to date for the latest from that across the Daily Mirror, Daily Star and Daily Express websites. But for now, it's goodbye. 